we are having a huge Labor Day blowout sale for t-shirts at mindpumpmedia.com. Just go to the store section. All t-shirts are $9.99 each. That's a substantial discount for all shirts. However, sizes are limited. And once the sizes are gone, they are gone. So get over there and get them now. Again, mindpumpmedia.com, the store section. The sale ends September 4th. That's Labor Day at 5 p.m. Pacific. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. Oh, we got the boys here. We this did. episode... You know, when we first started Mind Pump, uh, we didn't get any sponsors for a couple different reasons. Number one, it's usually supplement companies that we're sponsor. We're inflammatory. In, uh, in fitness, and we're very raw. We're very brutal. We have a lot of integrity, which turns off most uh, companies because- uh, Especially supplement companies. Especially supplement right. companies. Which is they, what our most podcasts are sponsored by. That's right. That's and, right. Or that's fitness people. Pays, fitness uh, people are, most fitness people are sponsored or connected by. We turned a lot of people away uh, because of that. But one company that believed in us uh, and approached us originally was Chimera. And we liked their product, but we weren't sold on them until we talked to uh, a couple of the founders, Frankie and Theo. Great, great guys. Genuinely great guys. Well, great I w- guys. I consider them family because of that. I think- uh, We're very loyal to them because of that. They 100% uh, went out on a limb, I think, uh, when they first got, that got connected with us. I mean, we were sponsored by them well before anybody else came along that was first of all legitimate I mean, we had a lot of like bullshit stuff come our way when we first started when you were small time uh and these guys were here well before that and so there is definitely a connection that we will forever have to them for for doing that and sal said it you know they are incredible at spotting talent and not because they found us but because of all the other great- Oh, Juju Mufu is one of them. I mean, yeah, when Chris they found Jerry Juju- that we just yeah, mm-hmm. so so I mean, we've he's, they've got getting uh, into drone racing. I mean, they're making moves. We I mean, we call them the Red Bull of coffee, right? So they they've got the Red Bull approach as far as uh they look for outliers. And I love that's what I loved about them was yeah. They did not want us to be censored. They were not trying to they change didn't give our us mes- a script or nothing. Nothing. They didn't change our message whatsoever. They just said, "We like what you you guys are doing. We believe that there's a huge need for what you're doing. We believe that you guys are going to be huge one day." And they're like, "Just do your thing. Do your thing. We want to be a part of it." Yeah. yeah. And so we really like the guys. But this episode's great. Great conversation. There's some funny stories that are told. So you get to get to know the founders of Camara and why we like them so much. They also talk about a couple of their new products coming out. They have extra virgin coconut oil in these individual uh, single-serve packets, which I think is brilliant. Oh, it makes it super convenient to just put that one serving size into your coffee. That's right. And then they're also coming out with a whole bean pea berry coffee, which is supposed to be incredible tasting, uh, which you can find the pea berry coffee at chimericoffee.com. That's K-I-M-E-R-A. K O F F E E dot com. It's limited edition, by the way. So get on there because it'll run out. They tend to sell out on things like this really fast. They've got a really uh, excited fan base. Um, enter the code Mind Pump uh, for ten percent off. Also, this month, enroll in any Maps program or Maps bundle and get Maps Prime Prime for free. Maps Prime is the pro- the program that teaches you how to prime your body. Before your workout, it's one of our more popular programs. So we're giving it away for free if you enroll in any other MAPS program or MAPS bundle. Mm. However, super bundle. if you do the super bundle, which is one year's worth of exercise programming, which already includes Prime, we're going to give you Prime Pro for free. Yeah. You're going to get the Pro model. So you'll basically have everything. Uh, it's a massive promotion. It's an exciting one for us. We've gotten a lot of fantastic feedback on all of our programs but especially Maps Prime and Prime Pro, those two, I could say uh, by far, have given us the most positive feedback. So you can find out about those programs or enroll in those programs at mindpumpmedia.com. So without any further ado, here we are talking to Frankie and Theo from Chimera Coffee. So Frankie, yeah. be honest with me now. Yeah. Mm. Let's say your music career just fucking blew up. Are right? you sure it's yeah. Primo Producers? Let's, let's pretend it didn't tank. Yeah. Would Chimera still, would Chimera even well, exist? We, we actually broke up. We didn't tank. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh. So, Ooh, who slept with whose girlfriend? Just want to correct you right there. <laughs> <laughs> creative, was it creative differences? I need to, yeah. 
Look for it. On mm. so. Who is the Justin Timberlake of the did group? We, did we start already? No. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Don't oh, worry yeah, about it. We're rolling. Matter. We're rolling. Yeah. We'll figure yeah. stuff out. Yeah. Hard. Did you guys uh, make any money? Uh, yeah, we probably like made like, negative. like 200 Like negative $200. $200. <laughs> 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 yeah. we, we, I sold a bunch of uh, uh, CDs from yes. the back of my car. They were 100 airs. To, to friends, <laughs> friends and family. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they were 100 airs. Mm. You guys got to buy dinner at Chili's. Yeah. Mm. Applebee's. Dang, dude. It's just groupies for days. Because I was, I was looking at you at dinner. I'm like, ah, he's good looking. He should be doing something in music or something, you know? But you mm. did. He actually performed at my wedding. Yeah. No. That's the only pr- yeah. Yes. Yeah, I got oh, it. Wow. That's what if I, I ever get married, I'm making wait, wait. you come do mine now. Did you dude? have like dance moves wait, and like hand things and all that to like go with it? Dude, okay. This guy so this practices dance moves in front of the mirror and all that shit. No way. Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I do. Wait till you see it. You're committed. <laughs> I love it. I love You're it. Committed. I love it. There it is. It sounds good. Let's put it on. Put, I, I, put it near the mic. Hold on. The fuck. I'm gonna give it to you on the TV. Dumb dick. Look up there. We were. That was unnecessary. I really, I just do not Ooh. know what to expect right now at all. We, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. There, there's cockfighting. There's cockfighting in the video. There's a lot of bestiality. Ooh, cock, uh, wow, <laughs> bestiality. Mm. We're gonna get flat. Is there any fucking of carrot cop in the video? <laughs> no, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> not, so great reference. This is that's that's our other partner. Numbers, not not the dark. The yeah, great mustache. Yeah, you wow, like that? Who did it took me a month to grow. Costumes yeah. were good. Let's stop for a minute and hit rewind like Michael J. Fosco back in time. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Shit. Woohoo! This is great, man. Oh. <laughs> That's like, you know what you guys remind me of? LMFAO. The Dominican yeah, version yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. 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 Just a lot a lot younger. Awesome. It's like better if, looking. How, how many years? How many yeah. years ago is this? It's like if Menudo like and more, LMFAO yeah, yeah, had that was a like, kid. like four years ago. Oh, this is only four years ago. It's not yeah. that long ago. Yeah, that's a good beat, dude. The Italian in me likes it. <laughs> I want to fist pump to it yeah, a little bit. How have we not put this on the forum yet? <laughs> I don't know. This 100 percent is going oh, yeah, on our forum. He's embarrassed of it now. Fuck no. that! I am 100 percent not embarrassed. Bro, he was singing earlier to us. Dude, this is fucking awesome. This is now, great. be, be honest. Look at he be sounds honest, like an, be honest. He sounds like an, an, How much like money an angel, dude. Listen, Frankie, be honest here. I want to know something right here. When you when you were doing this, like, did I mean, did you guys have goals of like continuing to pursue this? I did. Obviously, I you, did, obviously, I was, you put I was, some work in this because it's fucking yeah, good. Yeah, 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 dude. I was. Um, you see that script? That's where like uh, all my ideas for the videos now come from. I'm you really, were the you were the I'm creative. Really, yeah, I'm really creative with this type of shit, but. You see that Spinneroni? I worked yeah, on it for like six months. <laughs> Spinneroni. <laughs> he made his way up to the head spin. That's great, dude. This is awesome. Is that Mario? <laughs> check, check out my, my other part right here. What is it? I don't know what Where I'm going to do, but I want the back. No. Swag hot is cold. That's right. Trust it's me, bro. Pesos. Get the drinks down. Pesos. the cups. All the <laughs> ladies come play with us. Oh, don't you know? You know what, dude? We're like gonna make we're gonna make this shit go viral, dude. Yeah. You know what we should have done is we should have played this and actually made Frankie sing in the mic to this so the audience dude, I, can I, listen I, to it while we do it. Yeah, I can barely remember these lyrics. Oh, really? I mean, there was a lot of. If drugs I look involved. at it, then I can. I can. <laughs> it's like it's like singing rap, singing yeah. rap. Yeah. <laughs> look, look. He sounds like a like a song angel. Young yeah. lady. Who's the Rick James guy? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, Who's doing the He used hook? to work in my. He was my dad's gardener. <laughs> how much? How much did this cost to produce this? Uh, nothing. It was actually our friend owns a nightclub. Wow! And uh, those are all my buddies, and uh, he just did us a solid favor. So that two hundred dollars. Actually, all yeah, profit. The, the video. <laughs> <is all profit. laughs> yeah, yeah. The video editing uh, friend of ours. You know, we gave him like a hundred. You gave him two CDs. Bucks. Two CDs. Two CDs. <laughs> wow. You gave him some free okay. cologne. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys doubled your money the first yeah. time. That's pretty. Awesome. You could tell people that. Dude, I'm, we're so gonna post this yeah, on the right. This is so this is uh, one of the main highways. Cockfighting, in the Dominican. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah, I like it. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> this is a great video, dude. Uh, the after good part job. Right there. Yeah, turn Thank it off. You. He wasn't acting there, was he? Because he looked like he was really drinking. So. Uh, yeah, he was just passed out. <laughs> he got super excited. He didn't actually know he was in a dance video. So <laughs> he just thought he was yeah, partying. He just, yeah, he He's thought like, he was partying. Just fucking partying. <laughs> <laughs> so great. So what was the name of the group? It was Primo. So that's the name of the group. Yeah, Primo. Wow. So how many songs do you guys do in the album? Uh, fifteen. Wow. So that's... yeah. So if you go to SoundCloud, you go Primo Producers, 
you'll find all our songs there. Wow. <laughs> I'm but you don't, man. I'm you don't get paid yeah. on any of this? Uh, I'm a little embarrassed about this Oh my this God, one. more? Is that, yeah. that's numbers? Yeah, that's numbers. Yeah. That's our CFO. Right here? So Yeah, yeah. He's, dude, he's really talented and he just, this is a part of himself that he doesn't like exposing. Because he's, he's a professional. Probably shouldn't have put it on YouTube off. then, but. <laughs> he's got a nice voice. It's <laughs> a good point. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. nice, man. Good deal. That's hilarious, man. Yeah. Is this, so how, now is how, this far, how you go how far do you guys go back? You and numbers. Um, middle school. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you guys, how far do you guys go back? We were in the same school, uh, but we, all you guys. Yeah, when we moved back, I'm three years older than Frank. So when I moved off from Bas- Boston in 20, 2003, Frank moved back fr- back from uh, Miami. And we're all like, uh, I mean, we got together to watch fights, and that's when we started hanging out. Wow, so you guys go, I mean, that's, I remember tell, you guys yeah. telling us this when we first, you know, talked to you guys about, uh, you know, working together or whatever, and that's one of the things we liked uh, the most about you guys, because you guys were genuine. Boys first. Yeah, yeah, you guys were genuinely, you know, genuine friends, and uh, that, re- you know, that, that uh, resonated very strongly with us. Yeah. I mean, you can't just go into business with anybody. <laughs> People do that all the time, dude. I know. You know? I know. And yeah. Frank and I, we, um, we did all types of business. We first started doing... Um, Dehydrated fruits. Yeah, let's not talk. Wait, about hold on a second. Yeah, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We gotta talk oh, about this, just, man. Hold on. He's so, embarrassed. When, he's so you guys started a business of dehydrated? Yeah, fruits? we're like, we gotta start something together, and we started. <laughs> and we and dehydrated this. fruits is how you started. No, <laughs> what it, what is <laughs> flavored app? <apple>. Horrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> what, now, what is it that Sold made you guys you. think that? Like, with the the entrepreneur mind in both of you that said, like, we gotta do something together. Obviously, your friends when you grew up. I got lots of friends that I still talk to since middle school, but I didn't go do business with all of them. What was it about your guys' characteristics that you both were like, okay, we got to do business together. I think I, I always wanted to like prove to people that like we can do something in Dominican Republic with Dominican Republic products um, on an international platform. On an international platform. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah. Is there not a lot of companies doing this? No, not at all. So, really? Like so you most, guys mostly uh, we export raw material. So, so you like guys, company. You guys recognize, for example. Th- oh, I'm sorry. Go oh on. no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. For example, like uh, cacao for okay. like chocolate. Um, we have really big companies that export that and sell it to sell the raw raw products to like Hershey's or Godiva. Mm. So you guys uh, thought to yourselves, you're good friends. All of you have like what roots from Dominican Republic? Yeah. yeah. And you guys were pr- uh, were you like proud of your I guess your roots and like okay we need to do something with these materials that are coming out of this country. Or just really smart fucking businessmen and you saw the opportunity. Well, I mean, all of that, right? Yeah, I always thought that the country had so much stuff to offer and I wanted to show the world, like, we're not just a tourist place. We have all this amazing product and it'll give, it'll hopefully, like, motivate people to, like, do other stuff. Like, they'll find, I don't know, something, like a t-shirt that's produced in DR and they're like, I want to do these t-shirts. Stuff like that. Wow. So, uh, I mean, we're also, like, privy to all these crops. I mean, they're in our, our backyard, so you know. Now, did you guys sense. travel a lot when you were kids to the Dominican Republic? And well, I was we, born no, there. We were born and raised there. Yeah, yeah. So well, we went. We actually went to an American school over there. Like all all our teachers. Yeah, because like you guys speak Canadians and Americans. Okay, yeah. so that's. I mean, okay. I, I had one Spanish class. <laughs> and it was. It's it was optional. Spanish. Wow. Spanish class was optional. So uh, talk about your first businesses that you guys started to get. Talk about your failed businesses uh, before we get into the successful one here. Those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, was, it was called uh, manzanitas, which is like apples and small apples in Spanish. And it was just like dehydrated apples with like cinnamon flavor and chocolate flavor. And the company, I, the company that we actually started is the company that now sells uh, Chimera Coffee to our American company. Because it, it, that company... So it's still, you know... Was, still alive. It's like a throwback. We used to bring yeah. DJs. So it's the most yeah. massive yeah. pivot I've ever heard. Yeah. It's Dude. called Dry Apple. Dry Apple Industries. We used to bring DJs over. We had a fight league there. We put three big events like with 4,000 people. What? Yeah. It was on TV. I it was fucking on, love you guys. The thing is that I had a beach bar and I had like access to all these promoters, all these DJs. And I, you know, as... My um, the beach bar. I, I like hosted events, like big EDM events. Uh, like I, I mean, my venue had like Tiesto, Swedish House Mafia, mm. like all the big DJs. And um, you know, I had the know-how on on throwing events. So you know, we also always like mixed martial arts and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it, let's do it. Let's do like some events. 
I mean, wow. I, how, got, how I got old, the know-how, I got the contacts. When Let's did you guys, can... how old were you when you first did, started your first business? Because you guys are like, young, you got, you're not yeah, old guys. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you must have started, you guys were kids. 26, yeah. What, where did that come from? Like, where'd you get the balls to do something like it's, that at that age? I didn't want to be an employee. I had, I had worked in Boston as an employee and it just like, they work you to the ground. I mean, mm-hmm. I love it because that's where I get all my, like my base and the foundations and work ethic. But um, I didn't want to like retire when I'm 65 and then like have a 401k with, oh, now I have a million dollars when I'm 65 and my body's like, I can't use it mm-hmm. basically. Mm-hmm. And you, so you guys all had this kind of attitude Were your parents entrepreneurs? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. real estate. Yeah. Oh, okay, so yeah, you guys—my dad is—you yeah. guys had a good, some good examples. Yeah. Now, what uh, what inspired um, Chimera? Because you guys did the fruit company or the dry fruit that didn't work. Was there anything else after that, or was the fight league? The fight league. The yeah. fight league. Now, did yeah. that? Was there any success in that, or was it just the last it, event? Well, was break it? that down. How'd that work? Like, what exactly were you doing? Uh, we were like hosting a, a MMA fight. Like a card, like okay. a fight card mm-hmm. in so the Coliseum. On, okay, on the uh, every bit of it. Then, so you guys would yeah, rent the Coliseum. Everything. Yeah, all... we we um we uh actually Theo. Re- Explain how that out. works. Not a lot of people understand understand how that that's a real legit. I had buddies that were like club promoters did stuff, which is kind of similar. Yeah. Like, explain that process. What that's like. So um, we basically we loved mixed martial arts. Um, so basically, I was the matchmaker Frank put together the event he had all his knowledge from like the EDM parties and everything so he handled everything yeah prior the logistics to the fight. from like sound yeah. lighting right um yeah you, know, tickets, you, just, you knew all the tickets. you had all these yeah. connections yeah so what now where does that come from were you just were you really popular were you in your area did you have lots of friends you obviously well, I know it's a you're small a pr- community okay it's a small community like so um you know, we travel in the same circles with with the most of the people that were buying our tickets. Plus, like when I used to, you know, host the events in in my beach bar. You know, I, I had all these contacts. A lot of people knew me from these events. You know, from the beach bar. Like it was a really popular beach bar that was like uh, thirty minutes away from the city. So like it was. I mean, it was a big deal. So you know, like a lot of I, I had a lot of contacts. So this is freaking awesome. I can't believe we didn't know this about you guys. Yeah. yeah. So how okay, so now walk us to how you guys started uh Chimera. Where did that come from and who had the idea to do it and what was that like? Um well, I was actually listening to a podcast in a car about it was a Joe Rogan podcast. He had a coffee expert and during that time um <clears throat> The Dominican Republic had closed the deal with uh, Godiva and Nestle for supplying their cacao. While I was listening to this podcast, um, I was thinking, man, Dominican Dominican coffee, like w- nobody knows about Dominican coffee. They go to the store and it's like Colombian coffee. And, and we, I, have, we have similar, like our mountain ranges are similar to like Jamaica, you know, yeah. like our, our, our weather. So, you know, the Jamaica, Jamaican blue coffee is like one of the best coffees in the world. Now, what, why, what makes it so good? You said about the mountain ranges. What, what are the characteristics of, you know, what kind of landscapes and stuff contribute to good Just coffee like the, or why? Just like the soil and climate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like it's, and it's, it's high altitude. So it's like perfect. It's like a p- perfect soil, perfect climate. You mm. know, it's high, like high, we get the breeze high altitude. And stuff. We get breeze. You know, we get the, uh, the cool weather, uh, the nice soil, and uh, we also get the sun. And then, and then shade. And what kind of beans are these? Are these Arabica? Yeah. Arabica, okay. yeah. Arabica okay. Katura. One interesting note is that, that we didn't know until we started getting into this world that um, the coffee beans, they need to be shaded by other plants. Sometimes they use avocado plants they, or any other native plant. So um, the farmer or plant, this okay. plant, this large plant there to shade it, to give oh, it. wow. Yeah. yeah. For that season, it'll have a different flavor than the next season, depending. Oh. So he'll be testing it out. Depending on what he's growing next to it. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. what's typical? So, avocado is something. You Avocados. Uh, I saw what we uh, have the uh, plantains as well. Yeah, the plantains. Mm-hmm. So, most of the time, it's probably like the farmer needs to grow avocado, and what, he'll like put it there. What about artificially shading it? Would anyone think to artificially shade it? Is that something you would do? Is it? I think it would be. It there, the farms are so big. It would be too yeah, much money lot. to invest. Oh, okay. in like it that. makes more sense to farm. grow something else to e- do that. Easier, yeah. Like easier to do. Yeah. So, so you so you said you were listening to a podcast, and then what happened next? What was? Oh, there? so I was listening to a podcast, and they were talking about coffee, and they were also talking about you know all these. Um, you guys also that you talk about um, doing something for yourself, not being in those nine to five, and. We were so, I have another real estate development company and I was like frustrated with um, 
payments and, and everything. So nine, I call having Frank, a nine to five. Yeah, and having a nine to five. So I call Frank. I'm like, Frank, I have another another idea. We're, this is like <laughs> yeah, our conversation. That's, that's how our conversation yeah. goes. <laughs> and Frank probably yeah. was like, oh, this guy. Yeah, he came he came at me with a the whole coffee idea, and I'm like, dude, another gourmet coffee. I don't I don't. <laughs> yeah. And we were actually uh, we were taking like brain vitamins and coffee, and it was like um, I found myself being really productive on both on both things. But then, you know, separately, not as productive. So it was kind of like, wait, this is fucking, you know. This is an this idea. Is, this is, this is really, th- there's got to be something to this. You know, there's, it's like synergistic. So before you guys started like Camaro, you were, and coffee. yeah, you were already supplementing. You were taking yeah. Yeah. nootropics, yeah. drinking coffee, you noticed together. I was like really concentrated at work and, mm-hmm. you know, I, I substituted it for my pre-workouts. And, uh, you know, I really liked the effect on it. Well, so you, and then we started talking. He did, uh, Theo uh, was taking the same thing, you know, stacking the same things. And, you know, we got to rapping and, you know, the, the idea was just like from a conversation we, that we had, we were like, yes, that's great. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's now, fucking try it. How hard, yeah. uh, it, it was, I, I imagine it must have been a long process bro, to figure fifth, out how to throw something in there and not make fifth, it taste like shit. Yeah. 52 yeah. prototypes. That was all, mm. during that time, My I was finishing up a building, so I was super busy. So Frank took the lead. Like I'm like, we should do coffee. Let's add nootropics. Like, we decided on that. So during that, probably it was like a year, a year and a half, where it was just like Frank experimenting on stuff. And I, I bought a scientist yeah. robe and some glasses <laughs> and a yeah. peach you dish. Essentials. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just basically like opening up the Facebook accounts, like doing all that like behind the scenes stuff. And Frank was like, getting all this and i'm like okay frank we need this for the fda go fda go take care of it and he's like okay let me do this let me come up with this formula we reached out to a lab in virginia to get a little help because a lot of uh, you know the mixes were coming out really really bitter really acidy coffee tasted like shit and then you know when there were a lot of uh little intricate details like you know if 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 um if it's if it's a food product you have to have um generally recognized as safe food additives you can't just throw in any nootropics it's a bitch my sister is going through this right now they're trying to start my brother-in-law is a hardcore downhill mountain bike guy and he's creating a basically like a healthy whole natural uh gatorade you know and Mm -hmm. the the hoops that they have to hop jump through because that it falls in that category they wanted to do it as a supplement they thought they could do that yeah yeah, that you can't Mm -hmm. so it's a it's a bitch man yeah yeah (laughs) yeah there's a lot of things that that go into it and um you know our our list started like at 15 different nootropics and then you know when it was a food additive it you know lowered it like Mm -hmm. maybe like seven plus the cost the cost yeah. of it. Yeah. How long was this process of uh, 52 prototypes uh, and all about that About a stuff? year. A year? Yeah. yeah, a year and something. Wow. And, and a lot of money? Did it cost a lot of money to do that? Uh, not too much. Okay. Not too much. I mean, nootropics are, are, aren't are that expensive mm-hmm. if you buy them in bulk. Mm. Probably like a couple of couple hundred, hundred dollars. Mm. So, fifth, so a year of this, just doing this, now you hit the right, like, okay, this tastes good. And, I like and, the effects. And, yep. How'd you know when you got it? How'd you did you both go? Yeah. Oh, this is it, or was it uh, like we had a blind tasting? Yeah. Oh, with with, with uh, friends. Yeah, with with about twelve friends. Yeah, and they got crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they got yeah. They noticed it. Everybody they noticed around. it because you know I didn't you know we we didn't want to be biased or anything like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're like let's you know let's have some people try. Was it, it that so. obvious? Was yeah, it like yeah. oh shit no yeah. way yeah. we're like almost all yeah. of them were yeah. like oh this is yeah. the they one. definitely felt it. The thing that I've noticed about. Camara, and that I get messages the most on is uh, for people who typically have issues drinking coffee. And what I mean by that is, like, if I drink, uh, so I'm sensitive to caffeine, and if I drink coffee too, too much uh, and have too much caffeine, I get edgy or I'll crash. So I'll get this energy spike and then I'll drop and crash really hard. Mm-hmm. And that's, Camara is the only coffee I've ever had where I can drink it pretty regularly. Otherwise, I have to really stop after a few days of drinking coffee, but Camara can do it more regularly and I, it's attributed to the, I guess the nootropics. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's got a, it's who's yeah, who's probably mo- like the, uh, the L-theanine. Yeah. Who's yeah. most responsible right. for uh, finding the talent? Like who's the one who gets grabs Chris and Juji and search? Like who's, um, yeah, because that's another, er- I want to talk that. about that too because you guys yeah. are, I think you guys are yeah. very, very smart with how you guys are you can spot advertising talent. your obviously you found us <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'd say it's 50 50 frank and uh, frank and i we have um well we we basically frank and i have a budget that's split half and half, half, and, half. and we can choose 
basically whoever we want. I'll send it over to Frank. Like, Frank, I found somebody. Do you like this? And most of the time, like, I'd say like 99%, he'll say yeah. Because I want, it's someone that I looked at, but I want, like, the whole team to to know about this person. Um, so that's why you see I practice no gi. So mm. I do, like, the no gi guys. Um, Frank has his interest. Numbers doesn't have time to deal with uh, with ambassadors. He's busy behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, plus yeah. we don't like him coming out too much from his dungeon. <laughs> yeah. He's got to be behind Lock him away. Yeah. Yeah. All day. Yeah. Yeah. Is that because he's shovel picked food back on his before door. or what? what? No, no, no. no. no, no. How, just, often you, like, how often do you guys strike out? Is it often that you guys pick someone and you're like, oh, that didn't work out really well. It's not with the relationship. Is it 50-50? Are you mm. nine times out of 10, right? Like how often do you hit it? Well, the thing is that, you know, you already have a, on Instagram, you already have your portfolio. So yeah, if, so if your feed easy. sucks, you pretty know, pretty much know what <laughs> yeah. you're getting into. Talk about that a little bit, because I think there's a lot of people that uh, are trying to build their business th- through social media and being a big company that picks up on on these things and decides, hey, I, let's affiliate ourselves with them or let's sponsor this athlete. What are you looking for? What are you looking at? Okay, well, people, the first thing that you have to do is stop taking pictures with your fucking phones. Right, we don't want any yeah. fucking blurry pictures. You know, you need a you need to buy if you're actually going to make a career out of this. You need like good equipment, like a DSLR. They're not that expensive, and if you're actually going to, you know, try it to get some sponsorship out of it, you need high quality images for you know companies to actually use your shit. Mm. That's a big deal. Yeah, so. I I you know I tell people a lot of, too with like Instagram. You know, I encourage. Actually, them. I'm so, I'm sorry, sorry about that. Uh, you could use like good iPhones. Or good Samsung, but because now the, now do some smartphones, yeah, yeah, now sp- smartphones editing. can you know. Can You're big on landscape. Engine. I remember you giving a shit for that from or, uh, using oh, the landscape horiz- video horizontal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm super anal with it. When people post a picture <laughs> and like, the oops. landscape yeah. isn't horizontal, it's like the first thing they teach you in photography. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, let's let's talk about why these things are important. These we know details. We, yeah, yeah, like people don't really understand that. They don't understand that there's there's reasons behind why that's not just because you like pictures nice like that. You're looking at it from a business perspective. It's the likelihood of somebody because the picture is professional. I'm more likely to read the caption and then from there what it could end up leading to. Right. Of course. Mm-hmm. Of course. I mean, I tell people a lot to just you know pull your your Instagram page since Instagrams we're talking about visual stuff. You know, pull it away from your face and let, from a bird's eye view when you just look at all the image do they make you want to click on them do they make you want to look and see what is this picture all about or what does he say or this is a great shot and want to comment think about it like that you know dude with everybody on instagram and everybody using social media you need to find a reason for people to get look at your stuff you know why why would people want to look at your stuff right so you got to give them a reason so who found who which one of you guys found us frank oh okay cool yeah oh excellent yeah Yeah. he he was Really trying like to get with like you guys best. for yeah. for a long time. Yeah. yeah, we um we went to one of the fit expos, and we saw like all the hoopla on with the shreds booth. Yeah, yeah. and then, and I didn't really know shreds then, but then I started you know after seeing like the circus they had on, like I started seeing the 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 CF. CEO, dude. <laughs> Frank, well, it's, from it? a business perspective, it's interesting, right? Yeah. That's what's yeah, it's I, interesting. Yeah. I'm sure your mind works like mine, where you saw it and you were like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Like, like I, they are on I started here. diving into all their yeah. stuff to see. I was like, "Wow, yeah. I can't yeah. believe this company." <laughs> Frank bought a Lamborghini because of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to sell everything I had. You know, uh, <laughs> people, please buy the coffee. <laughs> And we were broke. we were early. I think we were one of the first people to really call them out. A lot of people, if yeah. you've been a long time listener, you know that. But if you weren't a long time, because now they get all kinds of shit. Everybody's hating on them and talking about. But I don't remember anybody else hating on them back then. They were co- the cool kids. They were coming. They're on their way up. When we were like, uh. dude, I just found it really funny that they're like this dude is like hopping on a helicopter. He's like shaving, you know, shaving a, on a helicopter. Close up, and then, a yeah. close up of him shaving himself, putting on this this like uh, crisp new shirt. And um, and then he's like, "Yeah, you need some BCAAs." <laughs> I'm like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. I'm working out Dude, with my shaker cut yeah, behind me. BCAAs every have time. to do with you fucking hopping on a helicopter, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? It makes sense. But it's fascinating as fuck when you look down and you see a hundred thousand people like I know, it, right? Right? Yeah. It makes you go like, "What the yeah, fuck?" Yeah, like, or the dude the ha- hopping out wrong? of a Lambo. 
And then, you know, shaker, with a shaker cup, drink, 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 protein. Yeah. So we were talking about this the other day. There's actually, and this is ha- this is a, a company that's Executive on the rise payments. right now, are these companies that lease these cars now for time periods. Like here, one hour, you can have a Lamborghini. So people are taking these Lamborghinis, taking these, doing photo sh- shoots and stuff with it. Like it's getting to that point where that business is on the rise that you can actually make some decent money renting to people so they can look like You know what? To be to be in all, all honesty, um, like I, I've, I've been reading some marketing books and and uh, in one of the books that I read, there was a chapter called Fake It Till You Make It. So, I mean, they kind of basically... That's where it comes from. Yeah. <laughs> but I do think it's... I do think that the, it's starting to change because social media... You're starting to see now that it's uh, realism is more like like we'll like we'll do a photo shoot with me getting out of my Jetta like that's what we're gonna do next you know what I mean yeah to just kind of show all professional you know all professional looking though I mean coming out with my I think in the long run it's better my JC Penny suit it's better just to be real (laughs) yeah Yeah. you know that's uh, that's what's gonna get you longevity it's what you were saying you were saying that you said we were the first ones on hating them you're not hating you're being a realist yeah Mm -hmm. and and a lot of people are like you use hating because it's like an easier word but when people when I call out people on social media they're like you're a hater I'm like no you're a realist this guy did this it's wrong and he's doing it wrong and I I remember when we said it it wasn't like we just shit on the company it's like dude I got mad respect for the guy who did it you know he saw a beautiful opportunity and was on top of Instagram faster than almost literally built a business through Instagram Mm -hmm. that is a a a million something dollar business plus Mm -hmm. I I mean, was, I think he was what? What was it uh, valued at? You his, guys, his company, like million, way more than that. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. He did really like well. Actually. Yeah, I don't remember what it was, but I mean, he's made a shit ton of money through Instagram, and I find See, that very, very fascinating that someone could do that. And crazy. people can hate. We can hate all we want as far as the cheesiness of it and this and that. But I mean, that's you got a brilliant. I you know do, how they did. You know they actually own a lot of the uh pages all the page the big pages so they got in so early he was so smart to get in early he owns like you know shredded shredded academy you know bodybuilding uh you know all those big ones that are got like 1.5 3 million people and they're just pictures of shredded people the whole thing it's owned by shred so then they use they sell people they sell the people to get on their market. So I would pay $600 for them to post me on their page. They're making money revenue that way. And then in addition to that, they're marketing themselves through their thing. And then then they build multiple pages up. So they have like 10 of these. And so a a guy like me who might not know this comes in. Okay. I pay $600 for this page, this page, this page, this page. And it's really all the same people I'm advertising to. I don't know it because it's, it's spread across six different pages. Look at that, bro. In in 2012, is that 2012 that that was uh, or 13? In ten months, they made the three million dollar business. Shreds turned into. Uh, what does it say after the comma? Uh, he says. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, keep yeah. it real. Hey, oh, yeah. He looks older though than twenty eight. Yeah. Well, you know. He's I mean, not twenty eight. He's got to be yeah, older than twenty. Yeah. I mean, that's decent. We were valued at a hundred million. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of months back, he says so. yeah. he says me you say, <laughs> if you say it is he right? says yeah. he says yeah. i uh the strategy that you guys have for building your your brand i really respect because you you go to different you don't you go to different avenues different sports and you tend to find talent that isn't necessarily massive but has some kind of a reach. It's the Red Bull approach, right? I mean, who who was doing it before Red Bull? Do you know who did that first? I mean, they really were the first ones to do. I mean, that, is that right? what you're doing? Go. You're trying to find like like okay, this person looks like they've got all this talent. They're going to grow. Let's get in now so we can kind of grow along with them. I mean, essentially, that's that's what yeah. you want to get. Yeah, right. you, know, you want a smart business. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I we ask I ask uh, numbers all the time. Like, tell me something you're passionate about so I can go look it up. It's hard to get stuff out of him. But uh, I ask Frank, like, oh, what do you like? So maybe Frank likes yoga. So then I'll, like, look into yoga. And I say, hey, I found these yoga people. Um, like, running. Like, sometimes, because you start focusing just on, like, little things after mm-hmm. you get. So it's good to, like, ask people and, and um, like, ask even your team. Because even though we, I speak to Frank, like, every day, like, sometimes, I don't know, maybe he's interested in a, a go-karting. I think, yeah, I think, I think <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's a little mixture of, like, somebody – that might have a big following, but um, we also have people that just have really nice pictures or are really talented. And, mm. you know, then our feed looks good. Mm. Right. Like you saw that, you know, some of the videos that we do on, on like Become the Legend yeah. or like mm. the motivational mm. videos. And you see the clips on on the athletes that we have and, and you know, you, you see like the quality and you see the coolness about it. And then you're like, wow, yeah. 
So what, this what has been, you know, what has been the greatest challenge for you guys right now? I think like we're we're going through a process right now, and you know, it's funny as you uh, when you, as you get to a new level in the business, it, it, it comes on new challenges. And right now, we're we're definitely in this place where it's like there's so much that we want to accomplish and get done, and we just need more manpower. And it's almost time to again reinvest in that. And it's again dips into our pockets to do that. But if we want to scale this and grow it to the next level, these are the things that are necessary. What are some of the growing pains that you guys are currently going through and that you've gone through before? Well, I think that e-commerce is just like a beast of its own. You know, right, just like, like Amazon and shit like well, that. Well, no, not really Amazon because Amazon is like pretty much takes care of itself. Yeah. Amazon's the easy one. Yeah, Amazon is the easy one. But, well, you know, how do you, um, there's two, two things about like your website. Like how do you drive traffic to your website? And then once you have traffic there, how do you, how do you retain it? Like, you know, you, you don't want people coming in and then just leaving and not coming back. Mm -hmm. So you got to like set the correct traps in place to retain those people or like offer them something they, you know, that's attracted, uh, attractive to them. And, um, you know, once you have them, then you have to cater to them and, 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 and preserve them. Like with your, let's mm -hmm. say, uh, you offer them a really cool subscription email, you know, uh, something that has like, uh, some value, some value. So, I mean, right now I would say that our, our single biggest asset is our, our customer list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys run into a lot of challenges in the beginning? Like, what are some hurdles that you had to overcome as as you guys grew? Oh, uh, well, learning about that business. That was a big yeah. one. Yeah, but you there's have to learn about that. small hurdles in even like the the exporting stuff. Some of the yeah. times it got so difficult, like getting permits um, in the DR, or getting permits. Um, through, Just bureaucracy. Import, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, logistics. Good, it's good that we were three business partners because at one point I was I told Frank like that's it. I'm I, I don't want to deal with more phone calls like it's done the project said and then frank would tell no come on let's do it i'll handle this and the same thing when he goes doing yeah. it he's like ah the, the formula doesn't work let's whatever it's never gonna yeah, work like I, I always had in my mind like if yeah. it was easy everybody would be doing yeah. this i'm just gonna you know just keep keep on trucking keep on doing this fucking thing till it gets <laughs> yeah. off the ground and you know that's, that's how long did that's that the take? way i approached it you know i'd like how long did that take what, what, when was the turning point where you're like oh shit this business is yeah like about a year it took about a year yeah. to like to take off because you know right before we 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 took the business off. It's a little bit different than 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 just having a U.S. coffee business because we have to import the nootropics into the D Dominican Republic and then we have to export. Mm. So um, in order for us to have like uh, exemptions on taxes because we're exporters, mm -hmm. we need to like file a lot of uh, permits and stuff like that in the Dominican Republic, and um, you know we have to file let's say. Um, for each nootropic, we have to file something. And, uh, you know, we have to make pro uh, yearly projections and, uh, you know, have all these uh, uh, tables and charts and, and we have to submit all that and then have meetings with them and, what explain, a nightmare. and yeah. explain the business. So th there's, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of red tape that goes into this. So it's a little bit different. Here in the States, I believe you can, if you have a coffee company, you just maybe like buy the beans off a middleman or like have someone ex export the beans to you and then they handle that nightmare and you just, you know, uh, pay whatever you have to do mm -hmm. at, at the port or or maybe you could do like door-to-door -door delivery. <clears throat> have you ever thought about uh, growing the coffee in the... In in the DR and then bringing it to the US and then doing the nootropics and everything here? Um, well, it's, it would it's be too much expensive. Yeah. Oh, really? It's yeah. like the manpower over there. Oh, I is, see. It's, it's, it, plus, you know, we really like, uh, we really like contributing to the, 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 the farm community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome. Dude, those guys are so happy that we're there and when we go there, you know, like all the locals, we, you know, we have a, um, a charity over there with like the, the owners of the coffee oh, farm. Wow. Yeah. So we contribute to like the, the school children and we, you know, we, we had Juji Mufu go there in December and it was really, that was cool. It was fun. You know, we had like a, a full blowout event with like a, like a buffet. We had, we dressed up as elves, like fucking oh. fools. Juji Mufu <laughs> nice. came out as Santa Claus. All the ladies jacked were, Santa all the Claus. Ladies were taking all the moms like kicked tossed their kids yeah. to the side and started rubbing up rubbing on Juji Mufu. <laughs> Juji's like picture, sweaty picture. body. <laughs> you know, yeah, dude, so. he's such a, he, you know, what a perfect guy to do that he's with. Yeah, dude. He's just like that. Oh yeah. He's just like, yeah. just like his Instagram. No, he, he's it, a funny cat. He is, you know, people, I, he's been, he was one of our favorite uh, guests to get a chance to get like, to know, he's such a smart guy too. Such a smart 
smart guy. A lot of, I don't think a lot of people realize how smart he is because he, he was in IT, bro. He, bro, he, he used to is. build computers. I know. Yeah. He, he's <laughs> he's a nerd. He's yeah, very he very bright man. And when yeah. you get to talk to him off air and like really dive into his mind and like what he's trying to do and he god he learns fast talk about I, not judging a book by its cover huh? fuck yeah <laughs> i you know what so i and you guys found him early way early he like had three thousand three thousand followers three thousand three thousand yeah holy that's, shit that's a testament to yeah. your guys's uh ability to, and yes. I, I, I'm, I'm you missing. guys found us way small we were when you when you signed on with us that was we really early i mean we're god probably five times the downloads now compared to when you guys yeah signed up with us i think that's i mean which also we have this uh incredible deep uh uh loyalty to you guys because of that because i think that is so cool well that at that time especially um i mean we we nobody wanted to touch us we're hard to, we're hard to sponsor <laughs> you guys were so controversial yeah totally. i'm like yes yeah i love these guys <laughs> yeah how much do you, cool, do you feel like we've yeah, told you every time because you've, you've been totally you've been listening risk. since almost day i mean one. yeah you guys are pussies now yeah. <laughs> that's all doug's fault i tell these motherfuckers yeah i see oh. doug we doug He's tell, censoring you guys. I, uh, tell him, right? They, the spread your wings and fly. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how many honest episodes do you think you've listened to? Uh, he's all 10. Dude, I mean, yeah. Why are you putting him on the spot like that? Because I, I know he's listened to a lot. I know it's not I know, five. I know. But like six. <laughs> no, I don't know. Maybe like 40. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. I like when you guys talk about your, your daily life, like the your relationships like with your wives and kids. That's... Like, Do you know I got a great opportunity from uh, so my buddy Brendan Abendejo is uh, he was on Fox uh, Fox One Sports and so he was connected to the producer of Fox and Fox actually owns like forty different podcasts and at this time they owned Fighter and the Kid and I got a chance to actually talk to him on the phone because you know and this was early on in Mind Pump so. Oh, yeah. You know, of course, I knew the, the the reality of like Fox picking us up. Like we just started, you know, so I'm like, OK, they're not going to pick us in deep down inside. I'm going to swing for the fa- I hope I strike it with this guy so much. But that didn't happen. But what did happen was I had a great conversation with him and he gave me a lot of uh, good tips. And one of the things that he attributes to uh, firing the kids success is their ability to storytell and to share their personal lives. Mm-hmm. And that was when we put that. Well, we. We naturally did it kind of right out the gates, but that was something that we we try and make a conscious effort to do more of that. Especially these two guys, I'm always trying to push them in the direction of sharing their their stories with their kids because I feel like I being a guy who's not a father, uh, there's so much that I've learned listening to them that's made me go like, oh shit, I would be a, I would do I would handle that differently. I'm glad I heard that. I'm glad I heard that dialogue, and I'm like, God, if I feel that way, there's got to be fucking thousands of other people. So. Of course. I, I definitely think that. I, I wish mean, you got a lot of point of views here. So. Mm. And, <laughs> yeah. and you're a dad, right? Frank? Yeah. Frank? How, how old is your kid? A, a two-year-old. Oh, man. Yeah. No he's sleep? A, oh, is he, he's, are they terrorizer? Yeah, he's a he's a little little shit. He does, he does pull-ups. <laughs> yeah. Frank's doing him like pull-ups and improving his grip strength. All right. Well, yeah. two-year-olds are very energetic when you give them coffee. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> he, he, I think he only has, you saw like, that? He has like one You're or like, two cups a day only, right? Yeah, just... Yeah. just you know, you're limited to uh, yeah. 300 milligrams yeah, of caffeine. 300 milligrams a day. Somebody's pissed right now. So, yeah, he's, uh, he likes uh, dipping his finger in, uh, into my coffee. Oh, does yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. But he, like, I don't even notice. Like sometimes I'll just put the, the coffee on the coffee table. And he'll come over and I'm like watching TV and he'll just dip his hand in there and start eat, drinking the coffee. I'm oh, like, no! no! <laughs> Takes after Stop that. that. <laughs> Do you? Uh, how many different areas are you guys in, like into? And, and what I mean by that is, I know you guys have uh, uh, athletes in MMA, obviously podcasting. Oh my god! Do they have yeah. dr- drone racing? They've got freaking. You were just t- you were just telling me yesterday about, uh, or is it maybe this morning that you guys uh, work with a uh, in the gaming world, like video gaming world. Yeah, oh, you guys we, got into that. We've oh, been excellent. trying E-gaming. to get. An- into that, um, we actually work with a guy that um, we sponsor him. He's the the league announcer, so he mm. does the play by play. He used to be like a professional Call of Duty player, mm-hmm. and um, so we've been working with him for a while. He's out in the UK. He's really good. His hashtag is follow DK. I'm yeah. not really a big gamer, so Theo handles that. Yeah, mm. and unless numbers. you consider, so is that your lead? Unless you yeah. consider yeah. pocket pool yeah. games. So are you? Are you? <laughs> Were you the drone guy too? Who, who, yeah, because that was early. You got you were on that early too. My yeah. but my two best friends that grew up with are are so 
geeked out on drone racing right now, and it's hilarious because it's that was like two years ago. I th- it was two years ago, right? Yeah. When you when you picked them up. And that was the first I'd ever really seen it. I'd never even heard of it. Then. And each year, the drones are getting faster. Oh, that's and crazy faster now. And faster. It's on, and, e- it's on ESPN yeah. now. And shit. Yeah. It's like a legit. And, uh, the spectators, if you want, you put on the goggles. It'll say you're a spectator. You want to follow drone one or drone two or drone three. And I think that's what's cool. And I think it's going to be the, the f- future it's sport. Brilliant. I, think, it's, I think you guys are fucking visionaries. I think you're 100% right. No, it's, it it's, makes it's, so much sense. It's so, so check this out. My, my girls, because so Katrina's company just now hired three full-time employees that all they do is fly drones three pilots and then they call them pilots so they're they're it's a construction yeah. company right? yeah, it's, so a, it's a construction company and they have now have hired it's so a position in the company that did not exist one year not even yeah. fucking six months ago it's now a position enough to where they're hiring three people that this is their 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 new job now to do that so you got to yeah, know that like these a, guys are going to get contracts i like mean this. i'm in i'm construction and before what you used to like back way back in the day when you know my my dad first started his construction company he used to hire someone in a you know in a, helicopter. A, in a helicopter and that's that was so expensive yeah so now everybody like if you um if you have like a construction website you want to put like uh, all the developments from mm-hmm. like that type of angle from like a drone angle yeah. so you need to hire someone everybody that's doing a building pretty much so right. when, when i see stuff like that and then you see something like drone racing which will become the <laughs> pros of doing dr- flying drones can do anything any condition Jeez, like yeah. you got to know that's that's your, that's their fallback plan right as a kid you get to have fun put, build these cool ass drones make some money through sponsorships and shit and then your pivot is the possibility of you actually working for a large company doing this that's the future and you got to know and you see now when you go to like uh, the spartan race and some of these uh, big events all you see is these drones all over the place yeah. shooting all different angles. I mean, you're going to see more yeah. and more of that. It's so brilliant that you were on top of that, man. I mean, the drone shots are just so epic. They are. They make they make whatever video you're doing just feel epic. Yeah, it's uh, it's on the list for us as far as the new toys. We yeah. just you know we just picked up. But did you boys see the uh, the webinar? Doug's what was it? Doug called what's it Sling, called? Sling Studio. Sling Studio. Yeah. This no. is, is oh it? man, yeah, like one man can do the job of like four cameramen and you know somebody that's nice. managing the yeah. whole thing. So we get, it's, nice. it connects to your iPhone, it connects to GoPro, it connects that's, to the so like cool. DSLRs. Like you could connect it to anything. You could have six different different cameras, different types of cameras, all Bluetooth together. Doug's controlling it all through his iPad. It's pretty Shoot. awesome. Yeah, yeah that's true. It's cool. So how did you guys? So you got you have Chris with you. How did you guys end up meeting up with Chris? And I see you guys traveling together. Or? Chris well, actually wrote um, wrote. To my email, not Chris, his buddy Kevin wrote to my email. My, yeah, my manager, yeah. my business manager. Yeah, and I, I, said, I said to Theo, yeah, it makes sense, and I want to scrap yeah. with him, so <laughs> yes. I want to fight him. So here so. we are. So it was animosity <laughs> right from the beginning, huh? Yeah, yeah so, oh, talk wow. about the, so talk about that. So how, that's legit, you guys. Well, are Chris, you re- so your guy reached out to him. Was that because you told him to, or he was looking for good matches for you? How'd that happen? He, he knew that I loved coffee, and okay. um, I think that he saw you, know, you guys and saw that you guys were... were you know, entrepreneurs and had a had a sharp eye and were cool and all of your your pages and feed is awesome. So I think that was kind of like he saw synergy there. Mm. Yeah, and it, Frank likes to like beat up on you, ambassador. So he's like, get yeah. this guy up, we'll set it up. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, I look. It'll validate me. So. It's not. It's not. He's, you're not gonna be able to beat up on him like the gamers. Yeah, it's not the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not the start same. with those. Yeah, the, well, yeah. Okay. yeah you I, probably you work, your work your way up your the way ambassador up. line a lot. I, yeah. I've I've been training though. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm assuming Chris is tougher than the World of Warcraft kid. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris, you got quite a pedigree in uh, in boxing and in kickboxing. Um, what do you think about this uh, upcoming fight that's coming up here, dude, with McGregor and uh, Mayweather? I mean, it's it's everyone asked me, and like I'd really give the simple answer: they're boxing, so the boxer's going to win. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's it, I think it's going to be really tough for for McGregor to transition. And from 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 my experience, I've worked with a ton of MMA guys in, in my own sparring, my own training, and I literally I literally came from a, a, an MMA gym. Um, it's just the pace is going to be so difficult for for McGregor to deal with. So he's going to uh, get schooled. I think so. Yeah. I think. Well, you and I were talking at dinner, and I and I what I thought was you said that what I see is like what we said four rounds. You mm-hmm. said every, anybody has two rounds, right? Yep. So maybe he gets to six and he can hang there, and by that time he'll wear him down. Mm. And I told you that the line is seven yeah. or seven and a half. Yeah, so to seven. Yeah, I said I said five yeah. or six rounds. I think that McGregor is big enough, strong enough that he'll be in there for a little bit. And like I said, he's got a couple rounds in him, but I think the pace is going to catch up pretty quick. And Floyd's really that's one thing. Floyd is any is good at, at well the best thing he's good at is really being smart and seeing his opponents and analyzing at the moment. 
Yeah. You know, he's always seeing where a guy is, seeing where he's hurt, where he's out of breath, how he's breathing. He literally analyzes everything that's happening in the ring. That's what I mean. What he's known for, he goes that that those first one to two rounds, every Mayweather fight you'll watch is kind of slow paced, mm-hmm. and you can see he's filling out the guy's rhythm and he'll dodging. Even, he'll even lose rounds. He, could, I could see him losing a round to McGregor in, in the first. That's you know, why you couple need to rounds. keep it to two rounds. Like we're doing, <laughs> yeah. we're doing two rounds, two rounds. That's all I need. That's 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 hilarious. So are you guys all watching the fight together or what? Uh, no, that's August twenty sixth. Oh, yeah. I'll probably be back in. Yeah, you guys will be back over there. I see. I I said last night, and Chris agreed with me that I think uh, uh, I think McGregor is just going to disqualify himself. Yeah, I think he's yeah. going to start getting his ass kicked. You and mean, bite his like, ear. He's going to throw like a kick or do uh, some like a legal move. Kick. That's like the first thing I thought was going to happen in terms of how the fight's going to end. They're like, oh, you don't think it's going to go the distance? I'm like, no. Nah, I think that once McGregor realizes that he can't hang, he's going to try and make it really, really rough. And I think the refs are going to be ready for that. So, mm-hmm. and then that'll be a, a wonderful setup for a part two or something yeah. like that. Oh, I think I think that's a great call. I think, I, but I think people that are, I think the fact that they have allowed all the hype to actually get in everybody's head that the McGregor actually has a chance. To, it's, it's just brilliant. That's what boxing yeah. promoting is, though. That's how it's always been. You try and make you try and blow things up, make people believe that the underdog can win. It and it's funny that I totally feel like I can see this being could be a really boring fight to be honest with you and I still have got to watch it yeah. I still, just because honestly I hate all of it <laughs> I hate that I hate everything that's going on the promotion that what it's doing for you know well, for because you're a boxer exactly yeah. so you get this guy who's never fought before and he's going to chance to fight a like literally a living legend one of the best fighters best fighter of our generation where guys like me have been dreaming about fighting guys like this for our whole lives yeah. you know and this guy literally is this has been a two year. Don't you have like a it. big match that's going to happen right around that time that like nobody's Triple talking G, about? Triple G, right? Isn't in, tri- in Canelo, which is an awesome fight between yeah. two absolute studs in the sport. Like you have some of the two of the biggest names in the sport, and it's being overshadowed by this sideshow. Right. Mm. You actually have a pretty. I'm surprised because even at dinner you didn't say anything. I expected uh, meeting somebody of your caliber that is exactly that would be almost pissed about that because, like you said, that's that could be your payday. Yep. It should be your payday. You've put the work in. If you definitely have a better chance than, than our my goal when I had the Pacquiao fight was if I beat Pacquiao, we were going for Mayweather the next fight, and that was who actually Pacquiao fought after he defeated me. He went right on fought Mayweather the very next fight. Oh, I didn't wow. know like, that. That was literally the semifinal right for that. for the oh, Mayweather. My God. Sweepstakes, you Damn. know. Like, so that was that was. I so now like seeing this, it's just like fuck. <laughs> now walk me through what that was like getting ready for someone like Pacquiao. Pacquiao is yeah. fucking oh, yeah. the real I, deal. Like another living legend. Yeah. I, I've been saying this too about the McGregor Mayweather fight. I'm like McGregor picked. I mean, obviously he's the bigger, bigger, bigger guy. But if he fought Pacquiao. Totally different situation. Like he's got a really good chance of getting really fucking hurt with Pacquiao. Uh, Pacquiao's an offensive machine. Mayweather's not so much. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. So stylistically, and he looks like he's been hitting the Mexican supplements. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is Pacquiao getting jacked right now? Yeah, or I mean, that's been that, they've been saying that for oh, years. Yeah. But but uh, just, yeah. So back to your question, Adam, about you know you know how did that come about? You know, I, I basically with boxing, especially when you're coming from where I came from, which is basically a homegrown grassroots kind of campaign to get to where I got. Um, you just got to beat a bunch of people you're not supposed to beat. You know, and I was an underdog for, you know, a much of my higher level career and I just kept winning. You know, I ended up beating Ruslan Provotnikov in a fight that um, I was, I believe the odds opened up at 14 to 1. Oh, shit. It closed much closer. I think it was finally like 6 or 7 to 1. I know people that won a lot of money on my fight that night. And a testament right. a testament they to your you, will. In the, in the first round, uh, he hit you with a really big shot that yeah. busted your Have you seen his- orbital bone. Have you seen oh, his Instagram? I his saw that picture. Did I? Yeah. yeah. Pretty much yeah. had a purple grapefruit on my eye for most of the fight. But yeah, he came me with a left hook in the first round. And literally, people, this is what people don't realize in the public, like how dangerous punches really are. Mm. I got hit with one punch in the first minute of the fight. It broke my orbital in three places, my nose in two, and my eye was shut. Damn! Shut. One punch. Literally one single punch. People don't, people don't understand how good we are at punching you right. know like <laughs> it's what we do you know so so That's it's really salt, dangerous brother. in there yeah That's assault. Uh, and that was four months before his that. Pacquiao fight yeah that's another he had thing. that busted eye so uh, we, we were talking about that last night they're like that's not enough time for that to heal I'm like no it was not but you know like what are you gonna do you gonna turn yeah, on the Pacquiao you fight take the you take the opportunity yeah. when, take the you, when you can't you're yeah. still fighting right absolutely yeah we're looking to come back in December oh that's Tomo- awesome man. tomorrow he's fighting Frank 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be his tune-up. Tune up. Well, I want to I wanna talk Don't a little bit about... Orbital bone. Chris, I want to yeah. talk a little bit about your journey into becoming a pro, what mm-hmm. that was like. I mean, what in, what inspired you to be a fighter? And then what was that like, trying to fight your way all the way up to becoming a, a professional athlete? Like, Yeah, so uh, that's that's a great great question. I um I literally played every sport you can think of. You know, I, I, I sw- we talked about swimming earlier. I swam, I played baseball, I played football, I literally played everything. I played baseball. The, the, the whole team aspect for me didn't fit. Like, it didn't make sense for me. Even as a child, I was like, you know, if I had a bad game and we won, it kind of felt empty. Mm-hmm. And if and if I played really well and we lost, I was pissed. So I'm like, this is, I don't know, this team thing doesn't really make sense for me. Swimming was was cool because it was more individual. But at the same time, I wanted to punch people. I wanted to fight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I grew up, like, my I had an older brother. And, testosterone. And he's, he's, you know, he's been a big part of my life and kind of my upper my upbringing, too. And um, he should just make me fight kids all the time. Like his, oh really? Oh my God! We'd be, be at his baseball games, and he'd be like, "Yeah, my brother can my brother can run faster than your brother." And I'd be like, "I look at him like kids two years older than me and three feet taller than me." I don't think I all right, all right. Then we'd race, and I'd lose. He goes, "Yeah, but my brother kick your brother's ass." Oh God! And then I'm like, uh, <laughs> "Again, I don't think I can." But <laughs> and we'd do it. We'd be in a ring of older guys, and I'd be literally like like scrapping fighting, scrapping kids, you know, fighting. <laughs> Did them you over. have any technique back there? Not back then, then not yeah. at all. I was just you know, I was just it was just winging punches. It's like I'm looking at him like, "Why are you doing this to me?" <laughs> at one point, did you realize you liked it though? Did you go through a phase where you're like, oh, "Kind of, I'm kind of enjoying this" because you? I'm assuming yeah. after enough street fights, after you've been beat up a few times, you actually get pretty fucking good at you it. You know what it is? I, I was fighting so so many people that are older than me, and my brother used to kick my ass. So much. I just I wasn't afraid of anybody my age or anyone even somewhat around me. So like, and other people kind of noticed that. Like, yeah, he's not worried about these fights anymore. Like, this is this is kind of cool to watch him watch him go. And then I got into martial arts, and then I like didn't never look back. I think I was eight or nine years old, and I started training martial arts. What'd you like, start with? Uh, Chinese kempo. Oh shit. Mm, yeah, so that's where I started. Um, and we had a few. So my sensei, uh, Robert Morrow, he his father was a former boxer. So there was a lot of boxing involved in how he did his 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 training and um and his his style. So when we sparred, we sparred like full contact with boxing gloves on, and you know like it was this was kind of before the advent of of, of MMA, and we kind of brought a lot of that kind of sh- all around fighting involved. I have know? a similar background. Mm. I, I'm a black belt in Billy Blanks Taibo. Billy Blanks, <laughs> yeah. yo, Billy he Blanks man. could fight his ass off too. Like yeah. he was one of those guys that I looked up to as a kid because he was a he was a legit professional kickboxer. So you're just oh, deflated wow. when you saw him on the infomercials. No, nah, I was like, good for you, dude. Get the money. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that paper. The money. You probably yeah. didn't make a lot of that's money in point. fighting back then. Yeah. I mean, no, not at all. Talk about what that's like, too, yeah. uh, coming up financially through the ranks, because uh, I'm assuming for a boxer, it doesn't really get decent financially until you get up to the professional level. So I, I love kickboxing, and I didn't leave it because I didn't like it. I left it because there was no money. I, I won two world titles. I was undefeated. Uh, two different weight classes, two organizations. I fought some of the. I fought guys from literally all over the world in kickboxing. My biggest payday was like four grand. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. As yeah. a world champion? Two time world champion. How undefeated. fucking bullshit is that, yeah. dude? Just wasn't very popular. And it was also, again, that's when MMA was really picking up. So kickboxing got really mm. kind of shut out. People were boxing fans or people were MMA fans. Kickboxing got stuck in the middle. Like, all right, you guys that's so crazy to me because kickboxing is so like awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it's so entertaining yeah. and crazy. It and, doesn't like, people ha- just why is it not caught on? It doesn't have a pedigree in America like boxing does. Right. Like, if you go like I remember, I, if you go to like for example in Japan, right, and you yeah. watch MMA in Japan, the crowd doesn't boo when people hit the ground like they do in America. They respect it mm. because Japan has a, a judo you know pedigree, a grappling pedigree. Also, they understand it, and, and here in the U.S. we don't. It's boxing. Uh, so you know, it's it's just it's just Ooh, different. Yeah, yeah stand them up, you fags. Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> USA, USA, USA. USA. <laughs> that, and that's just it. And so in the U.S., I mean, it's uh, you, you the dicks. box, and now MMA is starting to grow. So that's the other thing too. So I always find it. Um, you know, when I first started watching, I, I I was a big boxing fan as a kid, and then when the UFC started, we were huge fans. And uh, you know, I remember I'd have friends that did martial arts, uh, like the traditional martial arts. And I'd tell him, like, man, you'd get your butt kicked by, like, a boxer who's only been doing it for, like, a year or two or whatever. And I remember in in school there was this kid who did a little bit of boxing. And then there was this other kid that was a black belt in, like, Taekwondo. And the kid who was a boxer, we had them fight to see who would be. And the kid who bought, I mean, kicked the shit out of him. <laughs> and I don't think people realize just, like, how effective of a fighter you can be if you practice fighting and how ineffective – of a fighter you are if you never practice fighting like mm-hmm. you can throw all the punches and kicks but if you never get hit or hit anybody 
You're not so doing Chris, it. So, Chris, how did man. you not go? I mean, I would think someone with your pedigree would highly consider MMA, mm-hmm. like going that direction. Like, what made you go the boxing direction instead of the MMA direction? Yeah, I. Um, so this is this is really the way that I put it. I grew up watching boxers, and and I remember watching with my grandfather. My grandfather's from Argentina, and boxing is big down there. And um, he used to talk about these guys like they were like gods among men. So I grew up idolizing boxers. There wasn't even MMA when I was a kid, you know. So like I don't have that that memory of looking up to Randy Couture, you know, because mm-hmm. when Randy Couture was was popular, I was already already boxing, already you know mm-hmm. training like that. So like even now, people are like, oh, what about what about boxing? I'm like, I don't have a passion for uh, what about MMA rather. Mm-hmm. I don't have a passion for that sport. And these sports are so dangerous that if I don't have a passion for it, I can't I can't balance out the risk versus reward for for that to mm-hmm. to make that jump. It's funny you should say that, Sal, because, you know, when I look at myself in the mirror, I go, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> yeah. You know, whenever He's I'm going to go like, to concerts or <laughs> nightclubs <laughs> or <laughs> bars, you know, I just can't or be throwing awesome these videos. hands around. Yeah. Or, or cruises. Or cruise, when, yeah. you, when you're about to pop open that bottle. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. I'm not too proud of that. <laughs> yeah. Wait, 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 what? Uh, <laughs> it sounds like a story. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sounds like there's a story involved there. I don't, when I don't, was this? Yeah. Dude, I don't. Was uh, this this recent I trip? I don't he encourage fighting. He can't say fighting. that on air. Yeah. He'll get, I don't like, encourage we'll fighting. Oh, don't worry. Doug, just, Doug edits all this stuff. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't encourage fighting, but yeah, I got into a little scrap uh, about six years ago on a cruise ship. I mean, it was on a 31st of December. New Year's it was like 1.30 a.m., uh, you know, everybody was up on deck having drinks. New Year's, I mean, come on. And uh, I was with all my cousins, my little cousins, and uh, we had these four dudes just, you know, passing by us and yelling racial slurs at us, like freaking beaners. Oh, and wow. You, you wetbacks. I'm like, dude, I'm not even fucking Mexican. <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> insult yeah. me correctly, yes. you motherfucker. Yes. That's what I say to people like that. You're going to insult yeah. me. Insult me, right, you dick? <laughs> And uh, then my, my little cousin goes to the bathroom and I see that they ambush him and they, they oh, like, grab him by the throat. He's like screaming, Frankie, Frankie. And I stand up and I like rush over there and, and, he, and the dude that was holding him down, he's like, fuck you, what are you going to do? And I just, you know, I just punched him right in the face. And I- uh, and I, you got I, him in a guillotine. I, I, I got the other dude in-, in, um, in yeah, So you in punched a, one dude, guillotine the other motherfucker? <laughs> yeah, I did. Damn, that. nobody caught this on video? <laughs> The security is a problem. That one went viral. <laughs> yeah, I did a triangle choke on him. But um, yeah, I don't encourage anybody from. I don't, no, no fighting, man. It was, it was, it was, it was really expensive for me too because the guy sued me for assault. Oh, I had to go to jail for like four days. Holy you know, shit! What the? Are you Miami serious? Miami Dade. He called uh, me. Shout out jail. to my homies in Miami Dade Correctional Facility. <laughs> <laughs> Still doing shout out to Dante and Negron. (laughs) (laughs) Four days. Yeah, four days because it was like um, you did real hard time. I did hard time when I went to uh, when they they got me in the system. I had to go through immigration and they didn't. They just put me in there without going through immigration, and uh, the immigration offices were closed. So. They, so they had uh, to wait till they opened. Yeah, yeah. they had to wait. Till <laughs> it was the, a long weekend, right? Yeah, it was like everybody was yeah. on vacation. Oh, you were so, so pissed. I got yeah. They uh, they threw me in there like uh, Saturday morning, and uh, they put in my request on Monday, and then got me out on on Tuesday afternoon. What was I the spent, lawsuit? What was he trying to sue? For? Assault, assault and battery. Well, you knocked out but his the teeth. Thing, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, permanent damage. Oh, when you, you when you permanent do some permanent. This damage, was six years ago. You know, because <laughs> your teeth don't, don't go back. Grow yeah. back. You knocked his teeth out. Yeah, that was a small detail you left out. Yeah. Like, oh. if I tell you a story and I punch somebody, you're not a very good storyteller. If I tell someone I punch someone, <laughs> I'm definitely going to let, let you know. If I well, like I said, team. I'm not proud of it. And, but, and you know, he forgot. I, yeah, you made that point yeah. already. You can, he so it's, it. it's funny because when I punch the dude, okay, now that we're, you know, storytelling. <laughs> yeah. Disclaimer's over. When I punched over, the dude, yeah. uh, the elevator shaft was right behind him. And it closed. And it had a sensor. And when, when it senses people, it opens, right? <laughs> yeah. And this guy went in there. And when it senses people inside, it closes. So it closed. <laughs> it closed he fucking got, head. yeah, I punched, yes. him in the, I punched him inside the elevator shop and then it closed and then it was it was really it's funny like a movie yeah it's like a movie so like when the scrap was over the elevator uh shaft opens back up and he comes crawling out like the walking dead and his mouth is like full of blood he looked like he a spit his teeth out his teeth? Ah! did his teeth stay on that floor and he went down <laughs> no 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 he stayed on that. <laughs> so frank called oh, me man, he called me like inside you buddy on the third day he called me from jail and he's I'm going to let him explain this. And he's like, man, I even had to do a three-way here. 
So like, now, no, 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 whoa, 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 whoa,
it was just basically learning trial by mistakes. And error. Yeah, trial and error. Then we we hired someone, which I would suggest anybody, because that whole SEO world and those those like Google search and Google ads, <laughs> it's a whole other world. Well, yeah, that m- more like the social media. Um, uh, we hired someone like getting the traffic into our website, but like uh, retaining traffic, we're we're handling that ourselves. Our our partner CFO numbers is really good at like web design and stuff like that. So he seems seamlessly like yeah. integrates all these apps and uh, you know with like the, the pop ups, uh, you know, the mailing list. I love his nickname it's numbers. N- numbers, yeah, that's that's so great. He loves yeah. numbers. What he gets guys, off on numbers. What are you guys' nicknames? You guys have nicknames? Just Frankie yeah, just and Frankie. Theo. Okay, yeah. we just tell numbers like. Okay, we want this on a website, and he'll just go to town oh, wow. and do it. Yeah, we like, need a numbers. He, I, so I imagine he's doing yeah, all the split testing and comparing yeah. all the yeah. stuff. Yeah, he does all yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we don't have to worry yeah. about that at all. Do you feed him yeah. bologna sandwiches? Like slide him under the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get back to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He does. Uh, what's that the exercise currency. that he does? He does. Um, <sighs> Some of that cardio yoga shit. No, it's this guy. Sh- <laughs> oh, Shanti. The T20. T20. Oh, the yeah. Shanti. He does oh, that. He does that in his living room. And he like swears. swears yeah. We're going to send you. He's send like, him look at me. I'm, I'm getting cut. I'm getting cut. I'm like, no, you're not. He has that saying also. He, <laughs> oh, man. If he, was, he has this, the Shanti. Yeah. Apparently, the, the people that do that. Have like so a Alex, logo or Alex, yeah. numbers. I know you're going to be listening. Your workout sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is so we're hiring a company right now, uh, Rhino Digital Media, that's doing uh, going to be doing all this side of our business for us, and that they use him as an example as like one of the better like internet marketers in our fitness world. Like Sean T gets to everybody. Them yeah. and then what's the other one that he keeps showing uh, talking about? Is Tony Horton. Tony Horton. Tony Horton. Yeah. Uh, Tony Horton P90X. That's a P ninety X guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. The, the I mean that's it's crazy. What a what a monster that is now. I mean, it's we we hired like three different companies, ended up firing all of them, trying to find because it was tough for us. Which it's I'm just snake oil people in the marketing. Yeah, business. because everybody knows they need help with yeah. it, right? That, that it's a big piece of the business, and then a, a, getting somebody who can actually deliver our message, uh, and it's tough because, in an authentic way. You know, something that jives with us. It can't just be so on on at least on on my side. Like um, I, we were collaborating with Quest Nutrition on some like. Uh, so social media stuff like giveaways and and stuff like that and i got to uh, uh, uh rapping with one of the uh the executives over there and uh it was really eye opening cuz cuz she she told me that one of her biggest assets were uh her her, her email list mm-hmm. and that was like whoa that was like really eye opening to me mm-hmm. i'm like D- dude we need to like you know really pay attention to this like you know that can 10x 15x your business just growing your email list. Well, we were talking to somebody, in, mm-hmm. and I don't want to say who it is, but we were talking to somebody who's uh, in the marketing world or whatever, has an email list that's massive, like half a million people, right? it's like 500,000 people. Yeah. And uh, they were telling us that it's worth like $100 million. Yeah. That 100, list. 150 yeah. million. Just that list alone. I mean, it's absolutely in, incredible how important that is for, you know, new, mar- I guess the new business, right? Because it's all, it's all eventually going to be that way. Yeah. Because I mean, that, that email list is, is, is are like people that are really interested in you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's not just not, random it's people. It's not like random people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What were some of the things? So uh, do you kind of in your head remember about where you were as far as how many emails you had? And then what did you start to do to really increase that? And has it doubled since then? Or is we're, it like... What, we're how, doing yeah. it now. We're, yeah. We just started focusing after Frank had that conversation. Um, we brought it up in a meeting. So we're focusing on our email list and we have special... Um, so our, our subscribers get special offers. Our, our, our yeah. email list was, was growing. Uh, it, it grew pretty fast uh, from us just, you know, from our Instagram. And it was, it was pretty much like uh, it, it, it happened kind of organically. We didn't, I mean, we didn't implement any, any let's say, how, what they call traps or, mm-hmm. you know, any, anything on the website. It, we had like a basic, just a basic subscribe Thing, but you know it had no for the newsletter for so, the newsletter yeah. but it i mean we weren't pushing just it. like a we banner up there yeah and we weren't we weren't even like uh, nurturing to it we weren't you know we didn't have like our newsletter now mm-hmm. has like valuable stuff yeah and, i like and it. funny and i fun, like what you guys said so there's some value to it that's good yeah and that's important so so what do you you guys are you guys have more than just coffee now you guys have other products uh let's talk about that a little bit and maybe what you're doing moving ahead like what are you guys looking to do uh, we're launching now uh, whole beans, coconut oil, and um, the we have the seed stack like a cow. yeah the seed stack just came out about two months ago, 
you that's know, been a game which changer I love. in that my, stuff in is my which, life. Which dude. Adam loves, dude. Yeah. If you would ever Honestly, fucking share it with us, that thing is like. Yeah. Adam, what? <laughs> Bro, you send he you guys. By the way, you guys send your care packages to him. He eats all that shit, and we don't get to taste any of it. So yeah. we're okay. We're uh, exchanging <laughs> information after this because Adam is a hogger. Because Adam's going to yeah. use it though. That's yeah. what, that's how I justify. Bro, it. I will use the shit out of seeds. I'll put seeds yeah. on everything. You don't get to pick and choose. You got to use all the products, or you got you don't you got to sacrifice all of them. I, yeah, I use yeah. all that. Pretty stuff. much changed my life, man. Like my my digestive. Uh, you got good poops now? Oh, my God. Dude, cause, I mean, you know when you have, like, a high-protein diet? Yeah. Which most people, as as large as me, <laughs> tend, to, tend to do. You're massive. You know, yeah. sometimes you have little log jams. <laughs> shit. You, you so, need silky so shit. Up. <laughs> Don't look that up, so by all the way. So, all the, okay, we have, the, we have the seeds. We have the cacao. We have the coffee. Coconut the, oil. The coffee is in we have uh, the juji. We have the K-cups. We're developing the Nespresso pods. Oh, cool. um, yeah, we get a lot of requests for Nespresso pods for Australia and Europe. They don't use K-Cups over there. And um, the nut butter, the sea almond butter, which should be out. Yeah, what is January? What January, are sea so. almonds that's different than almonds? They're, it's an, grown by the sea? Yeah, yeah, they're grown by the sea. It's, they're also known as tropical almonds. They're hard to harvest because the, the outer part of it, like the, the nut, it's, it's really soft, so the seed inside crushes really easy, and mm. it's really thin. Um, but we found we found a way to back home. We found a way to do it, and like we roast it and we grind it up. Frank developed the formula, which he mixes in with our coconut oil, which oh. will also be coming out. So mm. it comes it comes out really super creamy, really creamy yeah. And it's like uh, it's it's a little bit more salty. It has smoky. It has a little bit more flavor, yeah. Just because it's like you know living next to the sea. Excellent. You know that you, that environment. Do you have launch like, dates yet? Do we know how, how close are we? Uh, maybe like January. Okay. Yeah, we so don't want to just like throw products to you know. We have to, mm -hmm. you know, we have to do it right. Mm -hmm. So the the want. coconut oil should be, um, it it left the country last week, so it should be in a couple like three to four weeks. It should be in the market. Mm. Okay, so the coconut. So it's just that the seeds won't be. I mean, the nuts won't be till January. Yeah, or so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. That's right. I want to know what's coming next. Like yeah. what, and then how soon should we expect it? The coconut oil within a month. It should be. It should be in our store. It's Sweet. single serving. That's going to be cool. Yeah. So you can oh, yeah, squirt, yeah, yeah. squirt it right yeah, in your coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it, they're single packets. So and, you can uh, take it to the gym, put it in your pocket. Yeah, they're one to, tablespoon yeah. packets, and uh, you know we designed them specially, like thinking about cold weather. Because you know when 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 it's like over seventy degrees, it gets kind of like cold, like ice cream. Yeah, it's hard. It's something you have to scoop it out, mm -hmm. right? So if you have like a packet, you could just tear it open and and toss it inside inside your like hot coffee, mm -hmm. or, or throw it on your or take uh, it on a plane and or like take put it on, it on a, plane a salad, and, and or it'll, something. it'll dissolve in like twenty five seconds. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's excellent! Brilliant. How are the whole beans going to work with the nootropics? No, stuff? we're no, not. No, no nootropics. Okay. They're it's called just the um, coffee. It's called yeah. uh, Phase One by Chimera Coffee. So oh, okay. it's just. Uh, what beans. it's basically our what we use for our pea berry, um, pea berry. If whoever doesn't know, it's um, it's actually a mutation on the coffee plant. So every coffee plant yields, yields about 5%. three to five percent yeah, pea berry. It's really hard to harvest because you need to pick them out by hand. There, so what happens is instead of the uh, cherry developing two seeds, it develops one whole seed. Um, it tastes different. It has a less acidic flavor. It's a little um, fruitier. Yeah, a bit fruitier. So we're using that. We're going to sell it in whole beans um, as our, like, phase one. So, so do you have uh, – do you guys eventually want to have, like, a light roast, a dark roast, a pea berry, like a whole line of all yeah, different – probably eventually. I mean, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. We're, you know, we have – we have, you know, we can do it. What do you What are you hearing the most from uh, your your fans or you guys as con your consumers? What are they saying? Like they want, like you said, the K cups. You've said these things that you guys. What's the biggest yeah. one you're hearing right now that you guys need to tackle? Uh, well, I think we're doing that now. Yeah, like, I think with it's the whole beans, the whole beans, and then the they, espresso, they really, and then mm -hmm. espresso, so whole those, beans and those, espresso. Yeah. Those have yeah. been the big ones. That's yeah. excellent. And you were yeah. talking about yesterday about uh, nitro sealing or yeah, so. Um, our next batch, not this one. This one's batch eighteen. Mm -hmm. So batch uh, nineteen, we're gonna. Um, we bought a big nitro sealing machine. So like potato chips, they're nitro sealed. Right. That's why they last so long. So it's basically a way of of. We just guaranteeing to freshness from yeah, like you know if, if uh, three to four months from now it's gonna taste like you know it's like gonna, you just got it. 
Yeah, so, so you I just, could buy like, 20 bags from you yeah, and I could so put yeah. it. Put, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like we just roasted it. So and we could have gotten like it, a big like um, fresh, vacuum right. sealer, but we didn't want like the bag to look ugly. So that's why we're putting in. So the machine, what it actually does, it sucks out the oxygen, puts nitrogen in, then sucks it out again, and then puts nitrogen just to make sure all the oxygen is gone. Yeah, mm. yeah what causes yeah. like the oxidation is the oxygen mm-hmm. inside right. the bag. So yeah. We should do that for marijuana. Yeah. 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 Seal yeah. the marijuana and we could sell it the next year for a year. year oh, later. you guys used to sell marijuana after, yeah. after before so, before mine popped. I did, I had, he, he, I started. Where you were peddling drugs before yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, peddling yeah, maps. Yeah. Hold on a second. It's a plant just like coffee. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calm right. down. Everybody calm down. Yeah, no, two, uh, I. You'll do your first time here. Helped start up two cannabis clubs, the first two medical marijuana clubs in the Bay Area. So I was a part of that whole movement here. So that, there's like 170 now. It's re- oh, that's why you you were rocking dreadlocks yeah. back in the day. We all totally. have our criminal past. Back when, yeah. back when yeah. you had hair. Yeah. But we were, so I started there, but I actually even got into the, the growing side of the business. And so I had farms. So I had uh, outdoor, indoor crops, all that stuff. And, you know, I'd pay attention to the market. The market changes for cannabis uh, throughout the year. You know, when there's harder, it's hard to get certain strains at, and certain types at certain times. It's probably of the year. similar for coffee, right? The way that they're, you know, the, depending on the weather or whatever, it probably makes a big difference. Yeah. yeah. So because of that, we, you know, I would strategically uh, nitrogen seal. I'd seal them all, and then I would release them out at certain points of the year when the market was better for them. So like a certain strain that was. Uh, outdoor at a certain time of the year is much more valuable than any other time and then vice versa for indoor stuff. So I used to I learn how to do all that shit way back uh, when we were doing cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good business to get into now. Yeah, well, kind yeah. of. Yes and no. You know, I tell people, I think the time to get in it was when I was in it, but yeah. when everybody was scared as fuck. It's get nice. In. Now like saturated, right? Yeah. And you know, it's, uh, you know, everybody wants to do it because it's not as scary. When we did it, it was really scary to do it. Like it was, you know, uh, when we went down to get our business license, I remember uh, they didn't even have anything under marijuana. I had to be like this herbal supplement like shop is what we had to get it under and so just the laws, regulations, they were so uncertain. It's different from city to city and state to state. So there's no consistency in it. There still isn't a lot of consistency. They're trying to drill that down. And all that's really happened since I've been out of it is well, it's just more gonna... more hands are in the, in the pot mm-hmm. and more regulation, which is just making it that much more difficult for people to actually do it legitimately and make money. And I got tired of I, – I didn't like where the, where the industry was. It mm-hmm. wasn't uh, – but it wasn't my passion, you know. I saw I, I saw where it was going, and the the business side of me saw that, and like, okay, and I had a great opportunity. But I love fitness. I'm so much more passionate about that. You know, this mm. is uh, this is what I love to do. But that was a, that was a little ride. Mm. Learned a lot. You guys could do like a little. Uh, you guys could do a blend like a, a CBD. Ooh, yeah, coffee. Throw in some uh, some cannabinoids. We in get it. a lot of our offers from that. I knew it. I I'm knew sure you were. We We've gotten some companies reaching. We, Can I just tell you right now, your coffee does pair well. With we, certain strains, not even li- not even gonna lie. Yeah. Some of our I, programs may have, some of our programs may have been created under the influence of that yeah. combination. I had may a, or may not. Yeah. not. Yeah. 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 I had a guy send over a concentrate with THC infused, and it's hardcore. <laughs> yeah. Dude, hardcore, we get man. some interesting emails. We had this one dude uh, shoot us an email saying uh, if if we had oh my if we knew anything about doing coffee enemas. And I'm like, wait, what? Oh, He's like, yeah, <laughs> sounds like a mind publisher. The nootropics will shoot <laughs> yeah. right into yeah. your system. I'm like, N- no, but you can go ahead and try it. <laughs> Fucking stick coffee in your ass. <laughs> Let me know how that it's works. All the craze. Yeah, yeah they call Jesus. It, they call it chimera culo. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. Well, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, one of the main reasons why we like working with you guys is because we like you guys. That's the biggest reason why we support you guys so much and uh, why we like working with your brand. You got a good product for sure. Uh, but it's you guys that we like uh, the most, and so we appreciate it. Thanks for coming down, man. Yeah. We love yeah. you, dude. It's good having you guys here. Thanks again. Uh, listen, cool. Thanks, Mind man. Pump is still offering 30 days of coaching, and it's still free. All you got to do is go to mindpumpmedia.com and register for 30 days of coaching. Also, if you go to YouTube, you can watch Mind Pump TV. We post a new video every single day, so don't forget to subscribe. Lastly, you can find us on Instagram at Mind Pump Media. You can find my page at Mind Pump Sal, Adam's at Mind Pump Adam, and Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. 
The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>